Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I do a comprehensive set of tests on the Polar Vantage M. First, I will test the quality of the sleep tracking against a scientific EEG monitor. Second, I will test the heart rate measurements. And finally, I will evaluate the accuracy of the step counter. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Today I will focus on three of the main features of the Polar Vantage M that are shared between a lot of the Polar watches. First of all the sleep tracking, second of all the heart rate monitor and finally the step counter. Now let's start with the sleep tracking. I would say that the Polar Vantage M falls somewhere in the middle of Polar's lineup when it comes to features. It's more high-end than for instance the Polar Ignite but it does not have all the features of the Polar Vantage V and the newer V2. The Polar Vantage M still has many features though, and very importantly for the sleep tracking, it uses what Polar calls sleep plus stages sleep tracking, which is also used by the highest end Vantage watches. This means that in the morning, the watch provides an overview of which sleep stages you went through throughout the night. The question is, how accurate are these sleep stage predictions? For the sleep comparison, I wore the Polar Vantage M to bed for two nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements. It's called the Hypnodyne ZMAX and is being used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. If you're interested in this device for scientific studies, I will link it below. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I also manually went through the Polar Vantage M sleep stages and noted those down in a table so I could analyze them. With the infrared recording I can actually check what my movements were like and see if the Vantage M correctly predicts when I'm awake. Let's have a look at the results. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top, we see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. On the horizontal axis, we have the time of night. And as you can see, I went to bed quite late, a little bit after midnight. On the vertical axis, we have the different sleep stages. Deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. The sleep stages are plotted in the order as they are usually displayed in research. On the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded using the Vantage M. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we do see that for this night these parts were indeed also marked as deep sleep by the Vantage M, and I'm impressed by this. A lot of trackers get deep sleep very wrong, and at least for this first night this looks pretty good for the Vantage M. One thing to note is that at the end of the night it does predict some extra deep sleep that was not really there. Next, if we look at REM sleep, we also see a pretty good match between the EEG device and the Vantage M. To see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM in blue and again marked REM in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep, together called non-REM, and always end in REM. Non-REM is marked here again in blue and REM in red. This means that for this night, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five complete sleep cycles. Looking at the sleep cycles, they overlap quite well between the Vantage M and the EEG device, which is another good sign. Finally, I did not have any significant moments of wakefulness this night. However, the Vantage M did detect quite a few. So based on this first night, it appears to be quite sensitive to detecting moments of wakefulness. Now let's have a look at the second night. This is that second night, and starting again with deep sleep, we see quite a good overlap with deep sleep according to the Vantage M at the beginning of the night. However, similar to the first night, at the end of the night, the Vantage M predicts some extra deep sleep that was not really there. If we look at REM sleep, again, we see that this is quite well detected by the Vantage M. 
and similar to the first night, we can roughly see my sleep cycles in the recording according to the Vantage M. So that's quite good. Finally, if we look at my awake moments, we see only marginal overlap between the Vantage M and the EEG device. There's one clear overlap right here, but the other moments of wakefulness are quite different between the two devices. Next, let's have a look at the overall statistics of the agreement between the sleep stages of the Vantage M and the EEG device. First, let's have a look at the total percentage of each of the sleep stages that the EEG and the Vantage M predicted. Overall, we can see that the agreement is quite good. The most noticeable difference is the slightly higher amount of awake time according to the Vantage M. The other sleep stages are very close in their total percentages. We can actually check which of the sleep stages are mostly confused by the Vantage M. That's what I displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the left we have the sleep stages according to the Vantage M. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the Vantage M. First, indeed we see that what was deep sleep is indeed mostly predicted as being deep sleep. The rest is mostly light sleep with a bit of REM sleep and no wake times, which is good. Second, for light sleep, we also see that most light sleep is also predicted as being light sleep. Looking at REM sleep, we see something similar. We see that this was indeed predicted mostly as REM sleep. However, almost the same amount was predicted as being light sleep. Still, as we saw in the individual nights, this did not stop us from actually seeing the different sleep cycles. Finally, looking at awake time, this was indeed mostly predicted as awake time. However, it's important to realize that this number is highly influenced by the awake time I spend in bed before falling asleep and after waking up. As we saw in the individual plots, the awake time during the night was often not recognized correctly by the Vantage M. So these results look very promising. The Vantage M seems to be able to detect my sleep cycles and it also does a decent job at detecting my deep sleep. The only thing I'm not sure about yet is how accurately it can detect the time that I spend awake. It seems to be a bit too sensitive for detecting my awake moments. However, we have to remember that this test was just based on two nights. I plan to make a dedicated thorough video on the sleep tracking accuracy of the Vantage M with a total of eight nights of sleep tracking data. So stay tuned for that. Now, in addition to sleep staging, you also get a sleep score each night. Once I collect more data, it will be interesting to see if this score is predictive of how I feel in the morning. To test the heart rate accuracy of the Vantage M, I will compare it to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the Vantage M and the Polar H10 chest strap for five spinning sessions and three weightlifting sessions. That way I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges. Let's have a look at those results. Here I display an overview of the heart rate accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with on the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Vantage M. The blue line here indicates perfect agreement. So any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the Vantage M. The red line here indicates those measurements where the value according to the Vantage M is half that of the actual value recorded according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. This has to do with the fact that your heart rate is a frequency that these devices have to detect. Now the more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color is. As you can see, overall there's a pretty good agreement between the Vantage M and the EEG chest strap. However, we can see some measurements here in the higher heart rate range where there is some disagreement and also here in the medium heart rate range, which was during weightlifting, there's definitely some disagreement. So let's have a look at the specific training sessions to see what could be causing these issues. Here you see the first spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue, I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the Vantage M. For this spinning session, we see pretty good agreement. 
There's a slight delay in detecting increases and decreases in heart rate at the beginning of my training, but overall it's looking pretty good. For the second training session here, we see some major issues. We can see that for almost half the training, my heart rate was too low. This is likely the cause of the disagreement at higher heart rates that we saw before in the overview plot. Because if we look at the final three spinning sessions, we see almost perfect agreement between the Polar Vantage M and the ECG chest strap. Especially the last two agree almost perfectly, as you can see here and here. Finally, let's have a look at three weightlifting sessions. Now this is the first one. What you can see, as I saw with most optical sensors, is that the Vantage M has difficulty picking up on the sudden increases in heart rate that accompany each set of the exercises that I do. So in blue, you can see the increase in heart rate that accompanies each set. And you can see that the Vantage M in red does not always follow that. It still does quite well sometimes compared to some other optical sensors that I've tested, as you can see here, for instance. But for sure, there's not a perfect match when I'm doing weightlifting. I find the heart rate accuracy of the Polar Vantage M a bit mixed. For several training sessions, it was totally spot on, but for a few, the results were less than ideal. I plan to keep testing it and I will make a separate video with much more data. That way I will be able to judge the consistency of the heart rate measurements even better. Overall I have good hopes for the heart rate accuracy of the Polar Vantage M. The Vantage M also features a step counter. To see if this accurately counts my steps, I went out and took exactly 4000 steps in segments of 1000 steps. Now to get an accurate reference step count, I manually counted my steps using this tally counter. Let's have a look at the results. As I mentioned, for the step counting test, I went out and took four times exactly 1000 steps. I wore the Polar Vantage M on my right arm, which is also what the app was set to in the settings. I alternated holding the step counter in my left and right hand for each of the 1000 steps, which is what the right and left labels refer to here on top. These are the actual steps counted by the Vantage M. As you can see, there's quite some deviation from the 1000 steps I took each time. Surprisingly, when holding the tally counter in the hand, I was not wearing the Vantage M on, did the results deviate most. That specific detail might just be a coincidence, but overall the Vantage M undercounted my steps. The total number of steps counted was 3731, where they should have been 4000. As an example, compare this to the Mi Band 5, which I wore at the same time and which performed much better. I actually wore two other trackers as well, which also significantly outperformed the Polar Vantage M, both being within 75 steps of the total 4000 steps. The step counter of the Vantage M did not perform great in my first test. Compared to other watches I wore at the same time, it performed much worse. In a future video, I will do an even more detailed step counting test. In that video, I also want to test if the Vantage M gives any false positive steps. With that I mean, does it count steps when it's not supposed to count steps? For instance, when I'm typing or cycling. I also want to see how it performs on other people. When it comes to sleep tracking, the first results of the Polar Vantage M are really promising. It can detect deep sleep quite well, though it predicts a little bit too much of it at the end of the night. It was also able to detect my sleep cycles quite well. The number of sleep cycles is even indicated in the app itself. So it seems to be something that Polar focuses on. The one thing I'm not too sure of is how well it can detect the moments that I wake up. It seems to be quite sensitive and detects a lot of awake moments where I was actually asleep. However, given that this is just based on two nights of sleep data, I have to do a more thorough test to confirm this. In addition to the sleep stages, the Polar Vantage M also calculates a number of scores that represent the quality of your sleep, like their proprietary sleep score. In order to test the validity of these, I will need many more nights of sleep data. The heart rate tracking during activities holds a lot of promise as well, with the heart rate measurements being spot on for several of my training sessions. However, during some training sessions, the Vantage M did show significant problems. I will need to collect a larger set of data to be sure of the quality of the heart rate data. Finally, the step counting accuracy was not very good. The Vantage M significantly undercounted my steps and performed much worse than several of the other step counters I wore at the same time. 
it will also be interesting to test the Vantage M on other people and see how it performs for them. Overall, I'm very positively surprised by the sleep tracking accuracy of the Polar Vantage M. In terms of total percentage correct, it performed just slightly better than the Aura Ring and a bit worse than the Fitbit Charge series. However, importantly, because it can quite accurately detect REM sleep, it was able to pick up on my sleep cycles, something which the Aura Ring struggled with. I should mention some of the limitations of the data and the analysis that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the Polar Vantage M on me, and it'll be interesting to see how it performs on others. Second, I just have a limited amount of data. I will do larger tests of the heart rate, step counting, and sleep tracking accuracy to see if the results hold up. Finally, to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the Vantage M against the full scientific polysomnography setup. I actually plan to build my own polysomnography device using OpenBCI components in the first half of this year. That way I will not have to rely on sleep labs for my testing, which is especially difficult in these times of Corona. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.